Hey guys, my name's David, and today I'm gonna be installing these uh, bumper supports for a travel trailer and a fifth wheel onto my Keystone Springdale travel trailer. And the reason that I need to put these on is because you can see we've got two electric bicycles that right now we just carry in the bed of our truck in the original boxes that they came in. They fold up, thankfully, so they don't take up a you know, an insane amount of space, but they do still take up way too much space in the back of our truck. And I wanna be able to use that space for camping out under the camper shell. And so I gotta get these electric bikes out of there. But, you know, they both weigh about 60 pounds and the um, you know, cargo carrier, the steel cargo carrier that I'm going to mount to my travel trailer's bumper weighs um, about 60 pounds itself. And so we're talking about 180 pounds that we're gonna put on this really thin walled bumper that was never really intended to carry that amount of weight, especially going down bumpy roads like we do. You can see we're out in the middle of the Mojave Desert near Las Vegas. You know, these roads are not good at all, not maintained. And so I need to support my bumper before I go mounting almost 200 pounds of weight to it. Now the manufacturer of these supports claims that with these and installed properly, uh, they can support up to 400 pounds. And you know, that's well within, that's way more than any amount of weight that I want to, you know, mount to the back of my bumper, especially since we're going, you know, we already have this uh, spare tire on. And so when we uh, mount that cargo carrier, I'm gonna be taking that spare tire off. And that's every bit of 50 pounds that we're gonna be removing and then 180 that we're going to be then adding back on. Now it might be a little daunting installing these because you do have to drill into your travel trailer or fifth wheels frame to be able to then mount these. You know, you have to drill the holes that the bolts go through. And every installation is going to be a little bit different because different RV manufacturers use different frame types. Um, my travel trailer's frame is an I-beam, but there are also tubular constructions and S-beam um, frames. Uh, thankfully though, the manufacturer of, you know, the, the one that I purchased does um, supply plenty of hardware, all the hardware that you'll need to cover all the different types of frames as well as instructions to show you how to mount those. And so hopefully by watching this video, you'll get a good idea on how to install these bumper supports regardless of the frame type that you have. And also, if you haven't purchased a set of these for yourself, I'll go ahead and drop a link to the video description below to the bumper supports that I purchased. Uh, so you don't have to go hunting around to find your own. The tools you'll need for this job are a drill, a drill bit that fits the size of hardware you're using. In my case, it's nine millimeter, a pilot drill bit, wrenches and a socket set that fits the hardware you're using, a hammer and at least one clamp to hold the bracket against the frame of your trailer. The first step is to clamp the bracket to the bumper of your trailer. And in my case, I just use a single six inch bar clamp. But if you wanna use more clamps, maybe a C clamp to hold it directly against the frame, that would be a good idea. But it is imperative that you get this clamp flat and flush against the bumper, both on the underside and on the front side. The bracket that I used has this optional spacer that can be broken off by hitting it at the top and bottom corners with a hammer. And that is used if you need to relocate the back holes. If there's something in the way, you would place that spacer on the front between this uh, front arm and the bumper. And you can see in the instructions here, it shows you exactly how to use that spacer. Like I said, in my case, I didn't need to utilize the spacer. And so I just left it where it was. Next, using a drill bit as a punch, I punch center marks where I'm going to be drilling. This is important so that your drill bit doesn't wander and goes exactly where you want it to go. And then using the pilot drill bit, I drilled three holes into my frame. It's extremely important that you take your time 
to make sure that your punch marks are centered. You don't want these holes to be off center. And then I followed up drilling the holes to size with the larger drill bit. After that, we can go ahead and put the bolts through the bracket and then ensure that our holes all line up the way they need to. On my travel trailer, there is this support bracket that is welded both to the I-beam frame and to the square rear bumper. And what this is gonna do is space the bracket out on the bottom and top hole. And so I just use washers on those two holes to space the bracket out appropriately. I had to run to my local hardware store to grab these extra washers, and I also had to grab longer bolts than what was supplied with my kit because the bolts that came with it did, were not long enough for me to thread the, flan or the lock nuts onto them. And then it was time to secure the bracket to the frame just by tightening down those lock nuts. Be sure you're using some kind of lock nut. You would not want these to vibrate off while you're driving down the road. And that is it. That's pretty much all of the steps that it takes to successfully mount the support bracket to the frame. And we wanna make sure again that the bottom side and the front side are touching the bumper so that they can support it right off the bat. It doesn't have to bend down at all to contact that support bracket so it can do its job. And then installation of the second bumper support bracket on the other side of the bumper is the exact same as what we did for the first. This is a very straightforward installation as you can see, but I do understand that some people can get, you know, a little afraid of drilling into the frame of your trailer or fifth wheel. And so I really hope that this video, you know, eased some of those fears. It's a very straightforward process. The thing that you want to take the most time on though is when you are first um, like clamping the bracket to your bumper and um, you know hitting in those um, the just the punch holes or those little dimples with a punch you want to make sure that those are in the center of each hole so take plenty of time to make sure that those are centered because if you drill a hole off center then your bolts aren't going to line up with the bracket and what you would need to do in that instance is drill out larger holes then so that the bolts will still fit through. That is less than ideal, but if you do find yourself in a situation where your um, your holes that you drilled in aren't lining up, you do have that option. Again, there's a link in the video description below to the brackets that I used, so you can pick those up for yourself if you're wanting to load up the back of your travel trailer or fifth wheels bumper with some extra cargo. And if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below so that I or someone else can answer those for you. But that's all for this video. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.